Today we're going to start the nervous system unit. And our focus of today's PowerPoint is primarily just the basics of the nervous system, how it works, and what types of structures are involved in the nervous system. And we'll get into a lot more detail about other things in later PowerPoints. So we're first going to talk about the functions of the nervous system. And there are three primary functions. The first function is to receive information from your body. The second function is that your body then needs to respond to that information in some way. So the information comes in the form of a stimulus, and that's any change in the environment. So maybe it's a new smell, maybe it's um, a temperature change, things like that, something that you hear, that's a stimulus. And these stimuli can cause your body to respond in different ways. So for instance, if you hear someone uh, yelling at you to wake up, then you are going to wake up. So the stimulus of someone speaking to you uh, when you're trying to sleep in in the morning um, is going to cause your body to respond by waking up. The final function is that the nervous system is responsible for maintaining homeostasis. We've talked about homeostasis before in previous chapters, but just a reminder that homeostasis is where your body tries to keep everything in balance and is taking care of your basic needs like breathing, circulation, heartbeat. So basically all of the things that you are not in conscious control of, your nervous system is in control of. Our three main components of the central nervous system are the brain, neurons, and the spinal cord. And so here's just a diagram of that. Um, number one uh, is the brain, number two is partially pointing to the brain, and then uh, the bottom arrow of two and three are pointing to the spinal cord. You don't have to draw that, it's just to give you an idea. So here's a very basic version of how this works. You get messages from your senses or from various neurons within your body. And that information is going to travel up the spinal cord to your brain stem and then to your brain. Your brain is going to respond and impulses from your brain are going to travel back down the brain stem, the spinal cord, and then branch out to neurons and nerves within your body. Uh, the spine is really the only place in your body where messages are going to be able to travel back and forth at the same time very quickly. Um, a message can travel from the spine to the brain at the same time that messages are going from the brain to the spine. And that's really important because if you think about all of the activities that you do during a day, uh, for instance right now, you're hearing me speak while your brain is telling your hand what to write down on your notes. So lots of information going back and forth all the time. Your peripheral nervous system, um, if you think about the word periphery or peripheral, that means on the out outer side. So if your peripheral vision is the vision that you can see out to the sides of your head, to your, of your eye. So these are the neurons that branch away from the central nervous system. So if you'll notice, our peripheral nervous system then is in blue and our central nervous system is pink and red. We also then have two other branches, or basically the somatic nervous system and the autonomic. Your somatic nervous system is responsible for voluntary actions. These are things that you choose to do voluntarily. So any muscle that you can control consciously is using the somatic nervous system. So examples of this are walking, talking, writing your notes. On the other hand, you have the autonomic nervous system. And this controls all of the involuntary actions, things that you don't think about, your body just automatically does. Examples of this include your reflexes, your heartbeat, breathing, and digestion. Let's talk briefly about a reflex. An example of a reflex would be putting your hand on a hot burner and then really quickly pulling it away. Generally, you're going to feel the pain after you've already pulled your hand away because of how information travels down the neurons and to the spine. Um, another example would be um, when the doctor hits your knee and you automatically um, respond by kicking your leg out. So I'll use that as the example here. If your knee is hit, that information goes through sensory neurons to your spinal cord and then back to more sensory neurons and motor neurons that cause your leg to move. At the same time, messages are also traveling up to the brain, so you're going to get the message to your brain about the same time you've already kicked. That's all we have for today. 
Uh, make sure that you get your notes review done. If you have questions about anything, make sure that you write them down and ask them in class.